and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to configure a device pool in Cisco's Unified Communications Manager. So I have my phone set up in my lab here so what we'll do is we'll pretend that I have two locations. One in Japan because that's where I'm currently located and one in Dallas, Texas. So we'll, what we'll do is uh, we'll create a device pool for each of these locations and then we'll register the 7965 and 9971 on top using the Japan device pool and then the 7965 and the 9971 in the middle with the Dallas device pool. And we'll call between them, maybe pull up some settings and uh, see how it all works. So an easy way to think of a device pool is to think of it as a quick and simple way to apply several different settings all at the same time. Very often they're created based on their physical or geographical location like what we're going to do here, but you could also create them based on their function and if I get the chance I'll talk more about how that works a little bit later. Now when you go into configure device pool, in fact let's go ahead and uh, go to system, then down to device pool, and then let's go ahead and click add new. Now when you go into configure device pool as you can see you're going to be presented with a multitude of options and understanding what some of these options are, you know, what they do and, and how you configure them, it can be a bit overwhelming to say the least. Uh, and in fact, many of them, they don't even apply in certain situations anyway. So, so certainly uh, in uh, future videos, we're going to go down some of these rabbit holes. Uh, you know, that's what this channel is all about. Uh, but for now, uh, to make this video a bit more uh, digestible, uh, we're going to just focus on the minimum required settings. Okay, so that would include the Cisco Unified Communications Manager group, the date time group, and region. So let's quickly look at the CUCM group because there's really not a lot we have to do here. So if you have a cluster of CUCMs, uh, you can set up within that cluster a primary and a backup CUCM. Now the primary is where the endpoints are going to register and so forth, so if the primary fails, then the backup will automatically pick up the load. So it gives you redundancy and it's completely seamless. Now there's always one call manager group by default. Even if you have only one CUCM, you'll have a default call manager group that has one CUCM in it. So this becomes important, you know, as you add subscribers, but if we're talking about a single CUCM situation like we are here, then we can just select the default and leave it at that. Next, we need to configure a date time group. Now the date time groups we see here, these were pre-configured for the CUCM installation, but of course we want to configure our own so that you can see how all this kind of comes together. And then the same thing for the region, we're going to go in and configure our own regions to fit our own sort of mock scenario that we got going on here. So let's back out of this and start with our date time groups. So we're going to go up to System, Date Time Group. So we're going to click Add New. Then we're going to give it a name. We'll say Kobe underscore time. Next, we'll choose a time zone. So I'm going to choose uh, GMT plus 9. It says Tokyo, but it's the same time zone. Next, you want to select the date and time format, but actually, I like the way it is now, so I'm going to just leave the default settings the way they are. Now, down here, you also have the option of pointing to an NTP server. Now, NTP stands for Network Time Protocol. It's used to allow network devices to synchronize their time to one source. It's not really necessary for our purposes here, so we're just going to leave, it, leave that blank and then click Save. Now we'll do the same for our Dallas date time group. We'll click Add New. Then we'll call it DALS underscore time. And for the time zone, we'll say uh, GMT, I think it's minus six. Chicago will work. And again, we'll leave the date time formats as they are. I like them like that. Okay, click Save. Great, now we have a date time group for both our Japan and US locations. The next thing we need to do is configure our regions. So let's go to System, Region Information, Region, and there should be one already configured by default. And when you're first building your CUCM, it's probably a good idea to just modify the default, uh, change the name, change the settings, etc., and then create your other regions based off of that. But uh, here we're just going to go ahead and create a new one from scratch, uh, just because. So we're going to click Add New. And for the name, we'll say Kobe underscore RGN, and then click Save. Now, once we've created the Kobe region, we have to configure the region settings. 
Now to put it in the simplest terms, a region is simply a, a way of identifying the codecs that will be used for audio and video communication. And these settings will always be in relation to other regions. So if I have a phone in the Kobe region, what codec will be used if that phone is communicating with another phone that is also in the Kobe region versus what codec will be used if it's communicating with a phone that's in the default region or the Dallas region, which we're going to configure in just a minute. Now I'm going to select Kobe down in the Modify Relationship to Other Regions window and then go over to Maximum Audio Bitrate and then select 64 kbps g.722 g.711 from the drop down. Then I'm going to go over to maximum bitrate for video calls and I'm going to select the bottom radio button and then choose uh, let's say 768 kbps and then we'll click save. So as you can see it adds our configuration to the region relationship here in the middle. So what we're saying is that when I'm calling from the Kobe region to the Kobe region within or basically within the Kobe region, I'm going to use these settings. And by the way, knowing what these settings should be, you know, which codecs to use and so forth is really uh, the subject of another video. I'll be posting that video soon. So if you don't see, already see a link to that video in the upper right hand corner, then check back soon. OK, so that's region settings for Kobe. So let's create one for Dallas. So we'll click Add New then call it DALS underscore RGN, and then click Save. Now let's come down here and select the Dallas region. Now remember, before when we were configuring the Kobe region, we configured our settings based on when we're calling from Kobe to Kobe or within Kobe. So now we're configuring Dallas to Dallas, which is also within the same network. So we want to give it the exact same settings as before. So we'll select 64 kbps for max audio bitrate and then 768 kbps for video calls and then click save. Okay, so we've configured the settings for when we're calling from Kobe to Kobe and when we're calling from Dallas to Dallas. So now we need to configure for when we're calling from Dallas to Kobe and vice versa. So we're already in the Dallas region, so let's just click on Kobe down uh, in the Modify Relationships to Other Regions window. And this time for maximum audio bitrate, we're going to choose uh, 8 kbps G.729. And for video calls, we're going to put in 384. And then save. Now you notice that when I call from Dallas to Dallas, I'm going to be using G.722 and G.711, but from Dallas to Kobe, it's much lower at G.729. And the reason for that is because when we're calling from Dallas to Dallas, we're on the same network and we can tolerate a much higher bit rate than when we're calling overseas. And by the way, what's nice about configuring uh, regions is that once we configure our settings from Dallas to Kobe, as we've just done, it will automatically configure the reverse uh, from Kobe to Dallas without us having to do anything. So from here, we should be all set to go back and configure our device pool. So let's go up to System, then Device Pool, and then Add New. Now we're going to give our first device pool a name of uh, Kobe underscore DP for device pool. For the Cisco Unified Communications Manager group, we're going to select the default group, which is CM1. Then for date time group, we'll choose Kobe underscore time, the one we just created for this. And for the region, we'll choose Kobe underscore RGN. And then click Save. Now we'll create a device pool for Dallas, so we'll go up to Add New. For the name, we'll say DALS underscore DP then CM1 for the manager group, then Dallas underscore time for the date time group, and Dallas underscore RGN for the region. And then we'll click Save, and our device pools are configured. Okay, so I just registered four endpoints. The, the two on the top are registered using the Kobe device pool, and the two in the middle are registered with the Dallas device pool. I skipped over the registration process because we've already gone over this in another video, but if you want to see how to register phones to the CUCM, you can click the link in the upper right hand corner and uh, watch that video.
Now the first thing to notice is that the phones registered with the Kobe device pool show Tokyo's local time 1158 and the two phones registered with the Dallas device pool are showing uh, local Dallas time uh, looks like 958. Now if I make a call to the other phone registered with the Kobe device pool Then we go in and look at the statistics. We can see that we're using G.722, the codec that we just configured for Kobe to Kobe calls. But now, if I call from Kobe to Dallas, then go into the call statistics again, We can see that I'm using G.729, which is what I configured for the Kobe to Dallas calls. And that's, that's it. That's device pools. Okay, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. I'll have more like this in the coming weeks. I guess that's it for now. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.